Do you really need to push your film or use a tripod to get some great nighttime scenes? When I first got into film photography, I was still learning the ropes of the art in general, which is another way of saying I was just pointing and shooting, seeing what worked and what didn't only after I got my scans back from the lab. Still, no matter the subject matter I pursued, nighttime scenes always stuck out to me. I wasn't sure if it was due to their rarity in film, at least from my perspective, or some sense of nostalgia for those nights in high school when I'd be out walking back from a late night concert at a local venue, if not a friend or girlfriend's house late at night. And while I know there's several videos on the subject of night photography discussing how you need high ISO films and tripods, I wanted to do a bit of an experiment and see if you could get away with just using fast glass, a working knowledge of the light you're dealing with, and keeping in mind the reciprocal rule, something we'll touch on in a moment. And again, while I know it will be infinitely easier just to use digital, I usually prefer film eight times out of 10 in this situation just because I can never get my post-processing right with digital. Not to say you can't, I just suck in that respect. So in this video, we're gonna be doing another one of those strolls down Fullerton, following the path in my T T-Max P3200 video. Uh, for anyone who wants a reference, link up here. Uh, using my Nikon F5 this time with a combination of the 50 and 85 millimeter G series lenses, both maxing out at f1.8. As for film, we'll be starting out with Portra 160, as that's the role I had preloaded into the camera, before going into two rolls of Kodak Ultra Max. Um, first one will be shot at box speed of 400 and the latter at 3200, which is pushing at three stops. The photos on screen will have minimal editing besides bringing down the blacks a bit in Lightroom. I also wanted to make a few notes before I started this video. This was filmed on a cell phone with some crap audio, so I apologize for the noise. I will be cutting in a few times to verbalize what was too muffled up in camera with a bit of commentary. Uh, this was also recorded at the beginning of February, so if you would like uh, to remember what life was like before this coronavirus pandemic, here's a bit of escapism. At the end, I will be sharing some night photography tips as well as my thoughts on these images and also just generally commenting about the current state of affairs with this national pandemic. I know nobody really likes YouTubers getting political, but I am a full-time EMT outside of this, and I just wanted to say a few things before making a separate video on the subject. But for now, enjoy the next 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. I'll provide timestamps for the video if you'd like to skip around, but there's some tips sprinkled in there that I'll be going in depth so maybe watch it all? I don't know, it's up to you. These first shots might not be too great. I just kind of want to knock them out because I'm going to really need the 400 speed in a little bit. The same as before, I brought my light meter out. Let's not lose it this time. Let's not. So right now I'm shooting at f1.8. I think 15th of a second. I really doubt these are going to be sharp, but to my best. Definitely went ham on the equipment and brought along. You did. An 85. I'm actually laid down, so I don't like this shit. Look at all that stuff. The in these first few photos, I was relying on the in-camera meter, although what I was really key on outside of the exposure triangle was the reciprocal rule. This again is more of a guideline than a law to abide by, but it is helpful when you want to avoid camera shake giving you blurry photos when you don't have an in-body or in-camera stabilization. It's not really talked about much these days since those features are pretty much a given with newer cameras, but we're shooting film here. What the reciprocal rule says in photography is the shutter speed of your camera should at least be the reciprocal of the effective focal length of your lens. What that means is if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, your shutter speed should at least be 1 50th or faster. If you're shooting a 200 millimeter lens, then you should be shooting at 1 250th or faster. This again is more of a guideline than a hard rule. You still have to keep the camera still, although I did at times ignore that in this video. 
Why? Because there's times where you want the motion blur or prefer it over an underexposed photo. Although sometimes when you're hand holding, there's gonna be scenarios where you are not gonna be able to properly expose a photo without it being a blurry mess, no matter how still you are. This is why I advise against aperture priority or more automatic point and shoot cameras where you can't decide the shutter speed like the Olympus X8. So the following shots were mostly at 160th or 125th depending on the lens I use. In summer cases where I went lower than that, you'll see me try leaning against an object to lessen the shake from my arms or body. I, I think one point went to 1 15th of a second. So yeah, pretty slow. So I'm gonna wait for this bunch of cars to pass by, see if I can create some light streaks since I'm at 1 10th of a second right now. All right. The lights. Let's get them going on the phone. Tell me this, true or false, have you ever put your put your guys' thing just to pass through a light or to get food? Not to get food, but we have sometimes the intersection when we're like stuck, uh -huh. no one's letting us pass. I did it one time. <laughs> so yeah, switching over to Kodak Ultramax right now. Again, I'm not pushing it, so we're gonna stick to the box speed of 400. And I'm gonna just try to keep in mind my lighting so let's see how that turns out. This is where the fun begins. We try to get some interesting shots by getting above street level, so we're going to find this bridge. Okay. Cool. Remember, I forgot to change my ISO speed on this. Nice. So I'm still set to 160. Even though we're shooting at 400, so I'm just changing it now. Look how much breathing room that gave me. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I'm just screaming fuck it and I'm gonna be exposing for the highlights. This railing as a prop to help me keep steady hand. You know what they say about steady hand? I actually don't. Me either. <laughs> you just did another one, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Damn it. Switching back. That was shot at f uh, 1.8 at 1 15th of a second. 
so definitely going way below the reciprocal rule. I don't think that's going to be in focus, but we'll see with the little assistance I have from the railing here. Let's get the hell out of here though. Thank God I saw you step over something. That was at one, one second, 1 second, 1.6 seconds. Got it. Definitely not gonna be a focus. Definitely what? Definitely not gonna be a focus. dark right now and that's because it is <laughs> <laughs> we're going down the little little park street on park road with all lights it's gonna be good it's gonna be real good Get you. Firewood, huh? What's wrong? Like it. Oh god. I keep telling him he needs a stretch. It's actually been a long time since I've shot street at night with like a 400 speed film. Last time I did this when I started with film and I knew nothing of what I was doing, so. How do you feel now about it? I feel like I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but even if I don't get a shot, at least uh, we'll see what you can expect from, from this. Four, a four Kodak 3200. So this is three stops slower. Definitely gonna see the difference. And 
and here I am leaning against a pole for some support in these trying times. I like that that car's trying to slow down so not block my shot. <laughs> All right, so that one's gonna be at box speed. Put that there. Put that there as well. And this next one, we're gonna push uh, three stops. There. Now, let's not make the same mistake we did before. Let's change this to 3200. All right, I'm still gonna keep it at 1 50th of a second at 1.8. When I did this with the T-Max P3200, it worked out perfect. So I'm hoping this will hold up being pushed three stops. The last time I was here, I was with a Sikonic uh, 308 light meter, which I wish I had because as much as I love this new one, the L758, it's pretty bulky. I hate having to carry it around my neck, but obviously I can't be trusted with light meters because I kept dropping that last one. And so losing it. I do recommend the 308 because it's a lot more pockable. I wish I, again, I wish I had it, but that's what we got. Look at me completely. I know, gosh, shut up. So, we just had a break at the lost levels, downtown Florida. I recommend it, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Not sponsored, but 10 out of 10. Reasonable price onions. A dollar, guys. A dollar. Not 175. Not 125. Not even five dollars. Just a dollar. Onions. Also not sponsored. <laughs> also not sponsored. Alright. Back to the anything in here. I'm trying not to get the same shots I did when I was here last time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I know photography is life and it's not good to talk down your own stuff during a YouTube video, but about here is where I started to wind down and feel pretty meh towards my own photos. I'm not saying that to fish for compliments. I just wanted to explain the drop in quality in this photo montage. I was almost certain none of these photos were gonna come out. As I said, I've experimented with this type of lighting before and I know what does and doesn't work. So I saw these photos as a wash before I even had them developed. I could have experimented with no motion blur, maybe leaned on some more objects to compensate. But once I go down to that mental spiral that I was going in, it was hard to pull myself out. So we stayed out for a bit longer before I ended up calling it a night at Kelly Thomas's memorial. <sighs> So that's gonna be our video. I still got a few more shots here, but I'm not feeling it today, so that'll be it. Like, subscribe for more downers.
until the next time. Keep <laughs> chasing, chasing that light. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the video hello to anyone joining us from the timestamps and a special thank you to everyone who stuck through to the end i know 20 minutes is a lot but considering the subject i thought it'd do well to show you various examples of what is and isn't possible when you're shooting at night without a tripod i believe the reciprocal rule helped a lot in this video but there are situations where even pushing your film isn't going to save you from the lack of light it isn't the same as increasing the ISO on a digital camera because pushing film is not increasing the sensitivity of the film, it's just an attempt to compensate for the underexposure. So with that in mind, there are scenarios where you can walk away with some great images at night without lugging around a tripod, but you do have to keep in mind your sources of light. I know this sounds ridiculously obvious, but light loses its effectiveness the farther it is away from an object or person. That's why if you're gonna follow the advice here, it's best to use it somewhere with a lot of store or city lights. Um, I use 160th and at, at f1.8 and f2 without checking my exposure all the time because the lighting was pretty the, much the same throughout. And if I wasn't shooting nearby one of those light sources, the shot would pretty much be pitch black, if not blurry beyond use. That's why that's why you saw that huge drop in quality and motivation for me at the end. I knew what shots I'd be getting and I just wasn't feeling it. I know I probably should have experimented more, but for demonstration purposes, I decided to just complain about it here. Although I'm pretty meh towards the photos I've taken today, that's not to say I won't be doing this again. As I said in the beginning, some of my favorite photos were taken this way, and I wouldn't have caught them if I truly believed I needed a tripod or a higher ISO film. Again, you just need to keep in mind your light sources relative to your object of focus or, or interest. I remember this one photo I took of an ambulance. Not the best, but it was a bright white uh, with reflective you know, Code 3 lights running. That would definitely show up on film. And I believe this was Fuji 800, so it wasn't even that high of an ISO film. So again, don't be scared about experimenting if you have the time, just know it's not the same as shooting digital at night, like at all. If you'd like to see some better examples of what you can do with higher ISO film, please feel free to check out my first impressions of that T-Max P3200. I think that's actually better than this video, despite being older, but c'est la vie. Please don't forget to drop a like or comment down below with your own tips or any advice. It really hasn't it it really has been a while since I've talked to most of you or uploaded that Yosemite video that did a lot worse than I thought. I'm not sure if that's due to the YouTube algorithm punishing me for taking that break or if the content just sucks, but you know, it might be a combination of both. Either way, I hope this just means regular uploads for me because I know these are Corona times and the governor of California just issued a shelter at home order, which at the moment just means we all have to live like introverts with a six foot barrier between us and public. But I actually have a lot of videos recorded from years past that I never got around to editing for one reason or another. So now's the time, I guess. I am a bit nervous about Coming off like an asshole though, because most of those are travel vlogs before the shutdowns, but uh, oh well. These videos, despite how demanding they are, have always been fun to put out. I just always feel a bit pressured to do better than I am, since there's always a demanding need to put out weekly videos because, you know, the YouTube algorithm, uh, which isn't always something I can do. Still, as stressful, stressful as it is, I do want to take this more seriously despite any burnout because, you know, this kind of has shown a lot. This pandemic has shown what really kind of matters to people and, you know, jobs are everywhere shutting down and everyone's kind of tuning in. So maybe this isn't as pointless as it seems. Definitely not as essential as grocery workers and sanitation workers and baristas and doctors, obviously. All that stuff that, like obviously the, the medical stuff matters, but so does the retail workers because where else are you gonna get your food? Point is, as unstable as making a career online is, I think it's one of the few not being affected as much by this pandemic uh, because we can still make videos from home. Not to say that it's not unfortunate that I'm seeing a lot of people lose their jobs while others are risking infection by a disease that's still pretty much unknown to us. Photographers, small business owners, and freelancers across the board are all at a loss of what will happen to them if things continue the way they are. 
if not worse, and they contact this disease with the US's shit healthcare system. And I apologize if we start getting on a bit of a tangent here and I just skip around topics. I promise I'll go more in depth in another video, but I am a first responder or an EMT basic, it feels weird saying that. And this Monday will be the first time I go back to work on the 911 side of things after using up all my paid time off just to attempt to forget the world. If it sounds like I'm feeling a bit bitter about that, it's probably because I am. I've actually been wanting to do a video on this topic for a long time, but kept putting it off because I don't think it would be received too well. So for those of you who stuck out to this point, allow me to vent for a bit, just in case I don't get the chance to again. You see, I actually love this job, but make a point not to tell anyone my actual profession because the hero worship makes me really uncomfortable. So thank you if you feel that way, but please don't, don't give me any thanks in the comment section. That's not what I'm here for. EMTs in the Southern California area are not the same as they are in other states. We don't push drugs, we don't save lives every day, and specifically to my region, we can't even start IVs. We make minimum wage with fairly okay benefits just to pass tape to the medics in the back and drive upset tummies to the hospital at 2 a.m. for those who think they're skipping lines. I'm only half kidding, but you'd be surprised at the amount of people who call 911 for non-emergency related complaints like panic attacks, foot pains, or uh, public drunks, among other discomforts that lasted weeks before they decided to call uh, 911 at 2 a.m. After five years on the job, that's what 90% of our calls feel like. The other 10% people focus on, the heart attacks, wild car crashes, and terrible assaults, etc. You can thank the actual paramedics, the nurses, the doctors. I just drive the ambulance to the hospital and make sure to avoid any dumbass that might hit our ambulance because they aren't paying attention, either at an intersection or parked off to the side on the freeway. Sometimes I'm in the back helping the medic with compressions or you know, taking vital signs, but either way, whatever your viewpoint on the job I have is, it's not how it's viewed from those within the field. That's why I started this channel years ago and why I continue to upload despite the sporadic schedule and lack of growth. This is fun. This channel kind of keeps me going and it's why I continue to pursue photography as a career despite years of failure. That's why my side hustle, screen printing, you know, Despite hating it, I continue to do it because I need to supplement this minimum wage job. Sorry this isn't making much sense. I promise I'll go in depth in another video, but again, I'm going back I'm going back to work this Monday and although I'm not nervous now, thinking about the number of times some patient has coughed in my face without even attempting to cover it, the amount of times I've almost been hit by a car on scene, almost gotten swung out by some strung out junkie, or when family forgets to tell us some patient has lice or some bloodborne disease, I, I can't see this going well with a shortage of masks and gloves. So uh, thank you to all those assholes for hoarding all the medical supplies and a special fuck you to anyone who's talking down Medicare for all um, because this reality is proving how shit the healthcare industry is when it places profits before people. So yeah, sorry, I, I obviously have a lot of feelings and you know, to say the least, I'm nervous about supporting my family on a minimum wage job if it comes to that, but I'm sure I'm not alone. Uh, so, yeah, this, this fucking sucks. I just wanted to put this out there in case my company decides to act like they give a shit about any of us after, you know, saying our Christmas bonus was spread out through the year in the form of a, you know, raise that ended up being given a year before California raised the minimum wage. That's another story. Uh, I'm gonna stop ranting because the good news is all this ties directly to the channel. We are starting the process of a union, not on YouTube, but um, I work. It's extremely weird timing, I know, but that's the reason why the videos have been delayed this year. I was kind of helping with that because EMTs are at the bottom of the barrel in EMS. And even though I don't think we're worthy of the praise some of y'all give, we do deserve better wages, working conditions, and benefits. I think the nightmare and trauma that we deal with is worth that at least. Maybe, you know, then we could actually afford to pay for schooling and move on to other fields of medicine, if not at least be better trained and keep, you know, 
quality employees. I know this feels really out of place in the channel considering film, but these are weird times and I wanted to, you know, make a note of my current condition of and things in life instead of pretending because after all, how am I going to knock a fake happy YouTube that ignores reality if I'm going to contribute to that? This is in Egypt and I'm not in denial. Dad jokes aside, uh, let's end this video. So again, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, buy some stuff from Etsy so I can pre prepare for the economic collapse. Get a print or start a union at your job. Uh, definitely stop hoarding the toilet paper. Wash your hands, wash your hands. Don't touch your face, even though I've touched it like multiple times in this video. But yeah, um, I had to record this twice now and it took two hours the first time. And then I realized my mic here was not properly connecting with the cable. It's, it's some weird shit, but I hope it works now. If I'm drained, it's not just because it's late and I've been doing this for hours, it's because I had to do it twice. And I really need to scratch my face. But that's the video. Thank you for watching.